maybe next to nutrition, equal importance is being happy and purposeful every day. I think that positive vibe, positive energy and happiness, being well nested with your family and, and, and serene from the inside is another big secret for longevity. So be happy, eat healthy, do some fasting, sleep well and, uh, and exercise, then probably you're increasing your chances to living a healthy, long life. Hey everyone, welcome to the Reshape Your Health podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Morgan Nolte, and I'm really excited for today's conversation. It's actually been a long time in the making. I'll tell you a little backstory here in a second, but I'm interviewing Dr. Joseph Anton. He's an MD and PhD. He's the CEO and chairman of the board of El Nutra, which includes brands like Prolong, Fast Bar, and Nutrition for Longevity. Dr. Anton completed his health policy studies at Harvard University, public health at Johns Hopkins University, medicine and biological sciences at St. Joseph University, and his PhD studies in healthcare systems at King's College. So he was the head of health policy at the University of Chicago, and he's the founder of the Journal of Health Systems and reform. Today, we're going to be talking about the fasting mimicking diet, which is a hot topic in the world of intermittent fasting. Um, we've spent about half an hour just preparing for this interview. So we hope that it's a really succinct, um, comprehensive explanation of what this diet is, what are the benefits, um, who can maybe most benefit from it. And then my favorite question is going to be, can we mimic the fasting mimicking diet? So Dr. Anton, thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate you very much. I look forward for the conversation. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we're going to change somebody's life today. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the development of the fasting mimicking diet. A very interesting story. Um, the fasting mimicking diet came from uh, as a result of a lot of research from the University of Southern California. And USC has the only longevity institute around the world, and it's all under the leadership of uh, Professor Walter Longo. Probably many of your listeners know Professor Longo or have heard of him. He's the author of the Longevity Diet book. Uh, one of the best read actually is, is How Can You Eat to Live Longer? And it was an Amazon bestseller, the Longevity Diet book. So it, it started with, I think, some 23 years ago now, where Professor Longo was very fascinated with what calorie restriction can do to the body and the connectivity between restricting calories and living healthy and long. And um, at that time, they were doing the biosphere um, the biosphere uh, uh, um, a trial, if you want, where they, the in, in the middle of the desert of the, of the desert they had um, a biosphere, literally a physical biosphere. I think it was in the, in the, in in Arizona, and they secluded people there and they restricted their food for a long period of time. They wanted to see what happens to the body, and when those folks came back to the labs and they were studied. Professor Longo noticed he was a PhD at that time. He noticed that their organs shrank. And when, when they were refed, the organs went back to normal. And he was like, wait a second. They were not dehydrated. They were actually drinking a lot of water. So how come their organs shrank? And how come they can go back to so How come an adult can regenerate? Because when you, grow, when you grow every organ back or most organs back to normal side, the cell had to replicate. So this is where he started suspecting that fasting and or calorie restriction might actually beyond the weight loss might push cells to rejuvenate and to remultiply. And the cells who multiplies are the younger ones, the stem cells. They're not the old ones. The old ones, they don't respond to those signals. So he was, if I take the body through cycles of I get rid of old cells and senescent one, and I get the younger ones to reflourish. I'm regenerating that body and I'm getting it younger. I'm swapping, I'm cleaning old cells, senescent cells, and I'm pushing the young cells to re replicate. And he said, Wow, can I do this in a lab? I, people cannot go for fasting or calorie restriction for month and month and month. Can I go and do pure fasting instead of a little bit of calories for a long time? Can I do pure fasting for a few days? And that acute system, acute signal now, can it push still the, the organs to shrink and regenerate? So he went back to his labs at USC, he puts mice into fasting and he sees them shrinking and then regenerating uh, new cells. And, and that's fascinating because 
if you swap old cells by new ones, you're being younger, you know, with time. So you're creating a difference between your biological age and your chronological age. And that's the best thing you can do for your longevity because most killers today, Alzheimer's, diabetes, cardiovascular, autoimmune, these are, these are chronic disease correlated of aging. Um, you don't get Alzheimer's at age 20. You don't get your first diabetes diagnosis at age 22 unless you're super obese, etc. You don't get the first cancer at age 17. So the more you keep your biological age younger, the more you're pushing away your first onset of one of the four, the four big killers uh, today. He was fascinated by that concept. He said, okay, can I now fast humans and see what happens? And he started studying one hour of fasting, 10 hours of fasting, one day of fast, two days of fast, et cetera. And he noticed that it takes in humans a couple of days before the cells got engaged, gets get engaged. In the first two days, you have enough fat to compensate the calorie deficit. You have glycogen. The liver can help a little bit with adding more calories into the blood. So there's enough defensive metabolic defense the first two days. And after two days, the body tells the cells, hey, you know, I got to get rid of some of you, I cannot feed you. The others have to rejuvenate and do autophagy. And that process won the Nobel Prize in Medicine in, in 2016. And, and the younger ones, if you have the chance because you're young to replicate and reflourish after when you refeed, let's, let's do that. And that's the regeneration piece. And this, these mechanisms start after two days of fasting. So Ideally, he figured out that five days was optimal. If you go longer, you're bankrupting the body. You don't want to go for days and days and days of fasting. At the end of the day, the cells declare bankruptcy. He figured out that that five days was enough of three days of rejuvenation, but not long, to, long enough to, to, um, to, uh, to deplete the body. And then he went to human trials. He said, okay, let us put the first ever human trial on water fast five days. And, and USC and Mayo Clinic partnered on that trial. And it was so difficult to have people fast on water for five days that it took them a year and a half to just recruit few people. And so it was there was no way to do that. And this is where USC start talking to the NIH, the National Institute of Health and say, look, maybe we can develop a diet, a special nutrition technology where we can feed the body something so that people can comply and, and they feed the body, but the cells do not recognize the food. So we're we're moving from the definition of fasting of I eat nothing to I eat something, but the cells are not recognizing it. This that's the physiological fasting, meaning you get into ketosis, the cells see some of the food coming in, but they're not convinced that they're eating. So you put the body into physiological fasting with the fasting, what, what is now called the fasting mimicking nutrition or the fasting mimicking diet. And this is how it was created as a necessity to help people do a longer fast and benefit from the cellular phase of fasting, not only from the weight loss phase of fasting. Was this developed with cancer patients in mind? First, first yeah. First, <laughs> the, the, the first clinical trial was on cancer patients because we wanted to starve. Once you have cancer, it's the fastest growing organ. It's this, it's this cancer starts with a cell that's replicating, doesn't know how to stop and it just keep going. And cancer loves food the most and loves growth factor the most. So the idea was we can fast cancer patients and then hit them after four or five days with chemotherapy or hormone therapy. Cancer is super weakened and then chemo comes in and hits cancer big time with less resistance or hormone therapy or whatever therapy they were doing. And yeah, that was the first essence of the fasting mimicking nutrition was to help the cancer patient before it became a longevity with prolon. Mm -hmm. I had a, an, a registered dietitian, Martha Tettenborn. Um, she's the author of Hacking Chemo on the podcast. And uh -huh. I really like how she explained it too, because she said when you fast, especially these prolonged fasts, not only are you starving the cancer, but you're strengthening your healthy cells. Yeah. And so you kind of have that dual benefit um, from a cancer perspective, but what other areas of research, for example, like diabetes or neuropathy um, or cognition, have you guys studied as it relates to this fasting mimicking diet? So uh, probably the, the, um, the condition that could benefit the most is diabetes because diabetes is, 
is, is actually a foodborne disease, right? I mean, we, we stigmatize diabetes and we take pills for it and the pills will move glucose from the blood to the tissue. It doesn't go anywhere. It goes to the tissue. It gets stored in more fat. It creates more insulin resistance and therefore it pushes diabetes forward. Unfortunately, most diabetes pills push diabetes forward rather than backward. And the true solution for overeating is under eating. In our case, is fasting, right? <laughs> so it, it makes perfect sense. But we just we've we've been brainwashed for 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 years and years and years about the definition of fasting, which is just based on whether there's high glucose in the blood or not. It's not based on the totality of how much insulin resistance you have and how much HbA1c and all of that. So so we. we um, it makes full sense to say you overeat, you get diabetes or prediabetes, you undereat or you fast, you start inducing remission or regression. And we've, uh, we've actually done a couple of clinical trials um, around you know, prediabetes or diabetes and, and the patients were doing the fasting mimicking nutrition that we had. It's only five days a month. This is not a long-term diet. This is just five days. It puts your body into that weight loss. You lose weight when the body thinks you're fasting, but you're rejuvenating your cells. And that's very important while protecting your muscle. And we have a lot of secrets in the ingredients with how we protect the muscle and keep the weight. The diabetes, if you think about it, is, is as much as a muscle and metabolic burn rate as much as anything else. Because if you can keep that engine of the body high and, and burning calories, even if you eat a little bit more, you're burning those. Versus when you diet and you slow down the metabolism and you lose a lot of muscle, your burning rate is low. And therefore, when you go back and you eat anything again, or, or you go back to a normal diet, you pick up the fat right away and you increase insulin resistance even, even faster. And I think this is where medicine failed today is these cycles of I diet, and then I lose muscle and I go off diet and I'm gaining the weight very fast. I'm not gaining muscle, I'm gaining weight. And it's a vicious circle. And I think fasting unlocks that, especially with the fasting mimicking nutrition. We've shown in two trials now, two human trials, that it protects the muscle, hence the need for nutrition. Again, if you only fast on water, the muscle doesn't have any macronutrients to rejuvenate, right? So you can push for autophagy. Autophagy tells the cell, eat the inside. It doesn't give the macro and the micronutrients for a cell to rejuvenate and regenerate. And this is where the, the fasting nutrition comes in to help a little bit also with the growth or the support of the lean body mass of the body. So we, um, we've done a trial for six months on diabetic patients. It was published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Medicine four months ago. And it showed that people lost 1.4% uh, 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 on HbA1c which we're very proud of. If you decrease HbA1c by 0.4%, 0.5%, you're already at drug level. We did 1.4%, so three times the FDA allowance for a drug to get into diabetes. This is just five days, six times. I was just going to say, just, okay, so was it, it was once a month, they did the Prolon, which is um, kind of, it, it's a, it is the fasting mimicking diet. It's one form, one product to use. For the fasting mimicking diet, five days a month for six months is yeah. that's how the hemoglobin A1C, that's the HbA1C, which is a a three month average of your blood sugar, went down by how much? One point four points. Yeah, that's awesome. So it was it was thirty days total. That's yeah. it, and that's behind a lot of the success of of Prolan. It's just it's five days, and people, you know, and we don't recommend you do it all the time. It's once a month if you have a, a, a condition, but it's for healthy aging and longevity, it's just three times a year. Okay. And, and most people are, are, you know, find it very easy to do, to be basically give us 15 days out of your 365 days will help you a lot with, with healthy aging and rejuvenation versus having to diet every month. The secret being the rejuvenation of the cells. Mm -hmm. so, so one trial on diabetes was for six months. The other one for, was for 12 months. It's not published yet. It will be published soon. And uh, we probably the, the authors you know submitted the the article already, and it's showing similar benefits. I cannot talk about the details before it's published, but it gives us this this okay, what happens in twelve months and um, and we're very excited about the results there as well. Have you noticed any change in peripheral neuropathy or like the numbness or tingling, painful sensations that people who have 
a little bit more advanced diabetes might have in their feet or their hands. And on the on the short six month trial, we haven't seen major benefits there. It's trending positive, but not major. Where we've seen some neuropathic impact was on the cancer trials. So a lot of the chemo they do, they do, uh, you know, a lot of the chemotherapy induces a lot of side effects. And uh, and we have early, a little bit early results there. Uh, we're still in multiple trials, but some of the patients had minor benefits in 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 distal neuropathy. What about cognition? Have you guys studied um, like Alzheimer's prevention? I know this is all about long longevity related to the prolong. So how about our cognitive enhancement with this yeah. mimicking diet? We, we have a version. So the fasting mimic nutrition is a way to mimic fasting with food. Prolon is the product for longevity and weight management. There's a, there's a for Alzheimer's, for uh, diabetes, we call it a neutral health. It's another product and program, mostly program for that. For Alzheimer's, we have a higher calorie, 1,400 calorie program that mimics fasting because an Alzheimer's patient is, is an older patient on average, and, and you don't want to restrict their food big time. At the same time, Alzheimer's, we adjust the food for the, for the, for the system. So when you have Alzheimer's, the brain is a fat system, loves mid-chain fatty acids. So you can go a little bit more, more ketogenic on that, on that level. And so we just published two months ago the research on mice, and they, we improved cognition on mice with, the, with, uh, with dementia. And we're currently in a clinical trial um, in Europe at University of Milan on Alzheimer's specifically. We don't have the results yet. I'm, I'm very excited to see those, but I cannot comment on them. Uh, Is it before. on patients who have Alzheimer's? Yes. Okay. That's really, yeah, that'll be really interesting to see those results. Yes. yes. Um, so there's different kind of products. The Prolon is for longevity, weight loss. There, there's the l Nutra for diabetes. There's going to be a different one. And, the, but they're all kind of a five day short term um, fasting mimicking diet for certain health conditions or objectives. Yeah. yeah. The macro and micronutrients that mimic fasting are, are the common denominator. Then you adjust it to the system that you're, that you're tackling for the cancer patient. We go more restrictive because we want to starve the cancer as much as possible. And we want it so that when chemo comes in on day four or five, or when hormone therapy or immune therapy, the cancer is so much weakened. So we go very strong on a fasting signal for cancer patient. Alzheimer's patient is a little bit less strong. It's a little bit more rich in, in healthy fats so that they go, they comply with it. It's safe for them. They still get the benefits. For autoimmune disease, we're testing a five-day version and a seven-day version because autoimmune disease is all about T cells, immune cells that are being by mistake, sensitized to attack an organ. And you want to, the rejuvenation of the cells, you want it to take longer, an extra two days, because you want to wash out as many of the T cells during the attack as possible. So we always adjust the technology towards the health condition so that we succeed a little bit with the fasting, but accentuating the fasting uh, signal to the system and, and, and the, the, that we're studying. It's really interesting. I was listening to an interview of um, Dr. Professor Longo, and he said that he thinks it should be called the fasting mimicking and enhancing diet because yes. there are certain benefits that they're seeing in the research with this fasting mimicking diet that you're not getting from a, a water fast. So can you elaborate on those a little bit? Yeah. And it was my bad when I first met him. I was like, Walter, it's a very long name. I cannot, I cannot take that to market. People have to already is fasting with a diet is an oxymoron mm -hmm. and you got to mimic it. I with know. It. Mimicking is like, it has a negative, has a negative connotation. It's like you're taking advantage of it. It's not, it's less scientific. And then the enhancing is too much. Um, so you're so like, you, we can't do the fasting. Can. Mimicking <laughs> and diet. But he's right. We published, we published a trial on, um, on, um, uh, on, on, on autoimmune, on, a, on a, a GI tract gastrointestinal autoimmune condition. Yeah. And it was showing that the, the regeneration of the, of the cells within the gut lining, the GI tract cells, was happening more with the fasting mimicking diet. It was mainly focused on mice and preclinical. It was happening more with the fasting mimicking diet versus the water fast. And, and that's, that's, this is why we exist. We exist actually to enhance the fast rather than to mimic it. Otherwise people could have, could have water fast. The, 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 when, when something needs to rejuvenate, if a cell needs to rejuvenate, if there's no proteins, no carbs, 
if there's no minerals, no vitamins, it's very difficult for the cell to rejuvenate. I always give the example of, imagine you have a company comparing the company to the body of a human, and imagine the company needs $2 million to operate per month, the body needing, say, 1,600 to 2,000. And if I come and I tell the CEO of that company, you know what, I'm going to give you $0 this month, no, nothing, no revenue. Yeah, the signal is so strong, he's going to go and restructure the company to survive, autophagy, rejuvenation, right? He's going to restructure the company. But it's such a dramatic situation that he's not going to be able to pay for his employees. So he's going to, and, and guess who you, you would lose first? You would lose the best employees because they could find a job very fast. He cannot order his supply for next month to be able to sell products for next month. So he's going to, his revenue is going to be damaged. There's a painful decisions that are going to happen as much as, or as many as tough decisions and good decisions. So the fast thing maybe can die is like coming to that CEO and telling him, okay, instead of $2 million, I'm going to give you $800,000. And by the way, we're going to earmark 200,000 to pay your people, another 200,000 for operations and ordering product, another 200,000 for marketing, otherwise you cannot sell anything. And by the way, we're not gonna fund anything else and you're gonna go restructure everything else. So with this $800,000, he can better survive, he can better rejuvenate, he can cut what was really unnecessary to spend, but he can protect the core of the company and allow it to reflourish once the money comes back. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, does the fasting mimicking diet keep autophagy on and in a physiological state of fasting that you're eating, right? Yes. Okay. And you're funding the correction because you're bringing calories. So you're funding. So the muscle is actually, you know, we always, I always get the question, how come you're mimic fasting and there's carbs in the soups and there's proteins in, in the bars and how come you're mimic fasting? And this is part of our secret is I don't want to starve the body through five days. Otherwise, you lose muscle, you lose bone density, you, you go through, you, you're going to pay the price of fast while you're rejuvenating. So the goal is how can I come? And there's a lot of secrets here that I cannot reveal. But for example, at night, when you want to sleep and the muscle is ready to rejuvenate, this is where you might give the muscle a little bit of a kick and carbs and our proteins. And we know at night growth hormone is high. So naturally the brain is pushing growth to the muscle. The muscle is saying, I'm doing autophagy. So I'm ready to rejuvenate. I'm trying to recycle my cells. And prolon comes in and says, here are the proteins, here are the carbs. And let's push a little bit insulin and IGF on top of that to give you another boost, but not overly spiking so that you don't go off fasting. But this is all within the realm of fasting. We take you into a shallow fast when we want to rejuvenate the muscle and a deeper fast when we're going to accentuate autophagy. And so let's dive in just a little bit more to the, the physiological definition of fasting. You mentioned IGF-1. What does that mean for, for people that have no idea what that means? And then what yeah. are the signaling pathways that you turn up or down to? Make? Yeah. So there's the common definition of fasting, which is eating nothing, right? And, and that's this is what everyone understands when we hear fasting. Now, science, science says, okay, well, if there's a physiological definition, which is the body starts producing ketones. And so, so not only you're not eating, but actually now the body starts its defense and starts cutting fat into ketones. Ketones are derivative of fat. So when you're fasting, the body goes to the reserve, the reserve is fat, I'll cut fat, I'll transform it into mid-chain fatty acids, and I'll use it as calories for the body. That's a physiological response. There's a cellular response of fasting, which is autophagy, and we've been able to get the body all the way there with nutrition. So the physiological and the cellular definition of fasting, they're not related whether you eat food or not, because now science has brought a way to mimic it with food. And so, so Prolon helps you get the physiological and the cellular benefits of fasting while you're eating food. And for the real big nerds out there, what are the pathways specifically in the cell? So the this, this cell has what we call nutrient sensing pathways, NSPs. And the three main ones are TOR pathway. It's mainly triggered by, by proteins, but also by carbs. And the PK and the RAS pathways. These are the three main nutrient sensing pathways. Will you just repeat those one more time? Is the, the first one mTOR, like almost yes. spelling out so that when I'm going back yes. and looking, I can, <laughs> yeah. will you just spell those MTOR. out? mTOR. 
mTOR. M okay. mTOR. The second one is the PKA. And PKA, the third, okay. And the third one is the RAS, R-A-S. Okay, perfect. Thank you. That way, when I'm doing the show notes and going back, I can be specific in case people want to go yeah. and do different things. Yeah. Um, so it's really, I'm learning a lot. And, and for a little bit of background, I was going to interview another doctor who worked either for your company or another company related to Prolon. And um, we talked offline for 45 minutes. And I was just like, I am so sorry, but I cannot have you on the podcast. I do not understand this well enough myself. And so I really appreciate you taking the time before this interview for almost half an hour to just help me wrap my head around it. Because um, for someone, I, I'm I'm in this field, you know, and it's still hard for me to wrap my head around and not just think that this is a marketing um, ploy to make money on intermittent fasting. Um, and I think that you really hit the nail on the head. One of my questions offline for you was, okay, well, I saw this, this uh, information that the, the tomato soup specifically here is um, caused a high blood sugar spike. Um, and just in case people are wondering, the first ingredient in this soup is rice flour. And then there's 25 total carbs, four grams of fiber. And I was shocked. You're like, well, yeah, that's what we wanted to do. And I was like, how does that mimic fasting? So you kind of explained it just a little bit, but will you hit home a little bit more on why your foods aren't pretty much all fat that would never trigger an insulin response? The, uh, so there are two, the, well, there are three questions here. First, no worries if it took you couple of days to, to uh, it took us tw two decades to get here. So <laughs> and introducing, introducing fasting with food and understanding how the cells do and perform. And we were water fasting. We, we, can, we come from the water fasting. We definitely um, are not banking on that movement. We created that movement. And, and by the way, we have, we have funded the knowledge of fasting and, and Dr. Longo and us and USC and now 18 universities are doing the research just to help people around the world benefit benefit from that. And, and just FYI here, Dr. Longo donates 100% of his shares to the Create Cures Foundation and other foundations. So uh, we're coming off University of Southern California. We're a spinoff from them and we donate the majority back to Create Cures and uh, Foundation and other foundations. We're not here to take advantage of the movement. We actually wanted to build that movement and wanted to make fasting compliant and safe and efficacious for most. So that's to, that's the first part of it. The second part of it is uh, you just uncovered one of our secrets We we and, and you're smart enough to catch that before the call. And you were like, wait a second, why, why you have carbs in here and how are you going to convince me that you're mimicking fasting with carbs? And that's exactly going back to the company example that we talked about, right? You can come to a CEO who needs $2 million and give him nothing and he'll be an absolute fast which is beneficial because he's going to restructure the company, but it's also detrimental. He's going to lose his best people. He's not going to be able to survive the next month with no orders, no sales, no marketing. And we come, we don't mimic fast by starvation. I don't want to come to that CEO and tell him, oh, here's $50,000 because you can mimic fasting. And then you're going to ask me about mimicking fasting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can mimic fasting by eating one cucumber and two almonds. Um, or one lettuce and, and whatever, but that's mimicking fasting by starvation. It's coming to that CEO and telling him, you know what, this is $50,000. I know you need 2 million. I know 50K is not going to do much for you, but I want to give you something. And, and that's one way of doing it, but that's not going to be enough. What we did, we took 20 years and we took over $36 million of dollars in the research to say, okay, let me sit with that CEO and tell him how much you need for your human resource department, how much you need for your accounting and financing, how much you need for, and we start, so we start studying every amino acids and what are the sequences that can nourish that muscle and the body and does not over spike IGF and which part of the day. Growth hormone is high at night. You don't want to go super high there. Growth hormone is low in the morning. Cortisol is high in the morning. So anything you give carbs in the morning is going to go pretty fast into the, into. so we start studying all the way from the gut absorption to the microbiome, to the cells, to what the body needs to function, while always going below the nutrient sensing pathway threshold of recognition of food. And this is what took us a long time. And this is because we wanted to come and give and do fasting by nourishment, not by starvation, so that the body flourish. We take the side effects of fasting off. We don't overstress 
that CEO or that company will allow them to perform. Keep this pressure of restructuring, but thrive while you're going through it and thrive even more when you go back and you eat the food again or you get the money back to the company. <laughs> I have um, I have a couple uh, questions from that. One is about the stress, but before I get to that one, it's going to be about if someone does prolon or another one of the fasting mimicking diets, do you really recommend that they follow the exact time then? Because many of my, many of my followers, they know that I'm not an advocate of snacking. I'm not a fan of eating at yes. night. I'm a fan of um, 100%. whole, like, you know, have a really nutrient dense meal two to three times a day Yes. with prolon. Is there, are there different rules to follow because of how the body's natural circadian rhythm affects hormone release? No, I, we actually fully agree with you. We, we have just a bar for breakfast, lunch is a snack. If people need anything to, because again, you're in, you're already in the fasting window. So your body is really in need. So to more for a safety, rather than an extra calorie we have a we have a snack one snack in the late afternoon and just and just dinner which is a soup and and olives and um and crackers so the goal here is to like you said is to create enough separation be beyond be, in between meals because if you eat frequently throughout the day you're just creating these mini spikes yeah. of of carbs and proteins and igf and insulin and you will not be in a fasting mode you'll be in an anabolic mode and unfortunately, I remember in the early 90s, there was that theory of eat five to six times per day and only got us more and more, more obese and more and, and accelerated aging at the same time. So I've, I've talked with um, another person who said if she was going to do it, she would have it like all at one meal. No, but, no, but no, because it's no. designed like the higher carbohydrate food is designed to help um, intentionally give your insulin sure. boost, give your sure. IGF one a boost so that you can kind of repair and restore your muscle overnight. I think that's a really important point. It's like, okay, if you're going to do it, no. do it right. <laughs> yeah. We have a card in Prolon and it tells you exactly when to eat what. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, we, ne we don't recommend that you concentrate all of it. Uh, some people are you know, busy. They go to work. They don't like to eat during the day. They come back. They're so hungry. They eat everything at the same time. Yeah. Whether they're, they're doing a, a prolon or an OMAD, one meal a day diet or anything else. It just, that concentration of food is not good because it's going to overly spike the aging hormones and the, and the anabolic hormone. You're going to store fat rather than be in a catabolic mode. And that everything amount is, of food goes above yeah, the nutrients. Of course. That you guys of spent course. Years so imagine in. if you yeah. combine the soups from dinner and lunch together, you're getting double the carbs, you're getting double the proteins, and so you're exceeding that threshold, and therefore the cells would recognize the food. Gotcha. Okay. My other question was related to stress, and we mentioned this offline, and I was like, oh gosh, I never thought of that. Um, was who's not appropriate for this? And do women need to time prolon with their menstrual cycle as not to cause too much stress and disrupt their sex hormones? Yeah. So uh, two answers. Uh, this comes from more for water from water fasting. Water fasting is such a big stress on the body that some, there's some recommendation that you should do your intermittent fasting maybe after the the uh, the ovulation period so you don't interrupt with it. And so some. OBGYN doctors, they recommend that you do, again, the water fasting after day 14 to start it then. With Prolon, we've studied, we had women in every study, it's all randomized. We've done over 32 clinical trials now. So we're talking about thousands and thousands. We just crossed a million user of Prolon, 83%, 82% are women. So we're talking maybe above 800,000 uses. Um, we've never, we've tested sex hormone. We've never both men and women, by the way, we've never seen a dramatic involvement into, into, into the menstruation. So we never had any back, and we're talking about hundreds of thousands now of uses. We never heard back that, you know, I lost my cycles or it, we actually never, that, ne that has never ever came back to us as a comment, neither in the clinical trial, nor in the market. Um, so we have never just focused on this thing, but it has never come back to us as an issue. And I think that's, that's going back to Walter Longo, the enhancing effect. We make fasting, the, the painful part of fasting, maybe one of it is the menstruation cycle. We take we temper that because we're feeding the body and we're mm -hmm. not depleting the body. So I cannot say 100% doesn't interfere, 
but I can say that with hundreds of thousands of women doing it, we've never had a feedback about it. To be safe, some doctors who recommend Prolon, we have over 15,000 clinics now recommending Prolon in the US. Um, some of them say, hey, if you wanna do it, you can do it after your day 14. But again, okay. we've never seen a, a, a true reason for that. Okay. On, on a nourished fast, not on a water fast. Sure. And I've, I've had this since I was on, I was going to go on the podcast or he was going to come on mine and we talked. And I'm like, I can't do this. I cannot <laughs> wrap my head around this yet. So they sent me a box of Prolon that I haven't tried yet because I was under the assumption that I had to time it with my menstrual cycle and I just didn't want to. And so now I'm actually really excited to know that yeah. I can do that at any time and that it shouldn't disrupt my hormones. I am very sensitive to stress. Just my, my hormones, my cycle is very sensitive. I had to give up caffeine. And, um, so I think I might still try to do it after ovulation if the timing's right. Um, but yeah, I think that Dr. Mindy Pellis has been on the podcast too, and she really recommends either the week of your period or kind of a little bit after ovulation, but not right around ovulation, not right before the cycle is what she recommends. So that's probably what I'm going to try, but um, after this conversation, I'm, I'm a lot more excited to try it. I, I think, you know, I was really skeptical coming into I this know. conversation. And I love that. And this is what I told you always. I mean, I was skeptical before coming to the company. We're all heavy scientific folks. And when you look at it, um, you're like, okay, fasting and nutrition, how does that work? Calories. And, and it took us the longest time to convince dietitians and nutrition. Imagine there, the resistance was so high. And now we're at a different word. The American Dietetic Association has two modules on the fasting mimicking diet and prolong. The American Nutrition Association is actually a big endorser. And we've done the fasting, uh, the fasting module between us uh, Prolon, Harvard, and the American Nutrition Association. The certificate is actually uh, worked by all three. And what I used to do to convince dietitians, we go to their seminars, and obviously, like, there's no way you can mimic fasting with food. So we had we had ketone buddies. We had ketone measurements in 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 the events, and every time a dietitian go into a session, say, "Hey, just try it. Eat the fast bar." We we didn't talk about the fast, but we have one bar yeah. that you can eat and it keeps you in a fasting mode. And they would eat it. They would go into the session. They go out, same blood glucose, same ketones. And this is where like, whoa, testing is believing. This is unbelievable. I mean, again, it took us two decades. And now we have over 240 patents filed on it. It's, it's a true okay. technology. It's a true breakthrough. And it's not, it's, it doesn't make sense on, on the first interaction, but it makes full sense when, when you dig deep into the technology of it. Yeah. Um, and the fast bar, they sent me some of those too. And those are actually really good. Um, I, I did like those a lot. So they're a higher fat bar. They had like a, like a honey nut and then maybe like a dark chocolate one. Yeah. So they were both. I want to send you, um, so these are the older ones and we, and also the prolon. I, I, it seems, it seems uh, it's, it took us a long time to really uh, to to plan this podcast, but we have a new prolon. I, I noticed you had the older box and the older, we actually hired the Michelin star chef who improved the taste, you know, uh, big time. We also worked on the bars and now they even taste better. Um, so I'm going to send you the new prolon. We call it prolon gen three, generation three. Okay. And I'm going to send you the new fast bars. Thank you. I'm excited to try the new stuff. Yeah. And yeah. I, I'm so excited to try the old stuff. And um, before we wrap up, I, th I have one more question. Actually, you kind of answered my question on, can you mimic the fasting mimicking diet? Not really because it's, it's been 20 years, millions and millions of dollars of research, but you can, you can kind of mimic like the starvation fasting diet, but not in a sense that yes. of technology that's been developed. So, um, my other question was, is there anyone who shouldn't do this? Like yes. who is it not for? Yeah. So if you're a pregnant woman, you're growing a baby, you don't want to like fast or starve. If you're lactating, you want to produce milk. If you're very old, then if you say you're, you're 93, you're frail, you have multiple health conditions, that's not probably the time to fast. And there's not major reasons for also young kids or adolescents to fast. They, they, they're still growing physically and, and they, they need actually high protein and, and good carbs diets. Unless I don't know in the future if you you know there's juvenile diabetes and there's a lot of people also gaining weight at early age so I don't know if there will be a version for that, but we don't see a reason today for a for a younger 
uh, kid to do any fasting nutrition. So if you're growing something, you're pregnant and or lactating, if you're really old and fragile and or if you're you know, super skinny, 18, 18 BMI below and or a, a young kid, there's no reasons for, for, for those folks to do it. Okay. Well, I, is there anything else that you wanted to share? I feel like we kind of covered all the points that we wanted to cover without looking at my um, notes, but anything else? The, the final comment is, you know, we focused a lot on, on Prol on the five days, which, which is again, our biggest technology and, and probably biggest uh, discovery for humanity and, uh, and, and for helping people rejuvenate their cells and, and living healthy long. Uh, a lot of time I get asked, okay, what are the other things that we can do to live healthy long? And and I, I just want to make sure that people also do the 12-hour fast, the circadian fasting. Okay. It's so important. You mentioned it. You said, I'd rather eat early and, and dinner and then go that overnight fast. And, you know, and it's okay to have your breakfast the next day. You would have done already your 12, 14 hours. And this is what we see the healthy intermittent fasting. We call it circadian fasting following day and night fluctuations. I do that. A lot of people ask me, hey, what do you do to live healthy long? I do prolong three to four times a year. I do my intermit my circadian intermittent fasting. And if I don't want to have breakfast, I do the fast part to pro prolong it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, exercise, obviously, and, and stress and sleep. There, there are three other pillars of longevity that are very, very important. But maybe maybe next to nutrition, equal importance is being happy and purposeful every day. I think that positive vibe, positive energy and happiness, being well nested with your family and, and, and serene from the inside is another big secret for longevity. So be happy, eat healthy, do some fasting, sleep well and, uh, and exercise, then probably you're increasing your chances to living a healthy long life. Yeah, and I think I wanted to point this out earlier just be just doing the prolon or another fasting mimicking diet five days a month doesn't get you off the hook the other you know the other days of the month we still want to be optimizing our nutrition yeah. on the other days too so i wanted to point that out there but i really appreciate the interview today dr anton um where can people learn more about you and your company uh, i'm a, me personally i'm a, under dr joseph anton on on the typical social platforms um active a little bit more on linkedin though um, on the company l-nutra.com, L for longevity through nutrition, l-nutra.com. Oh, There's, um, yeah, we're all about longevity through food, through nutrition. There's, um, you can see the mission and the vision of the company there, which a lot of people are, are we're creating a big movement around us. And there's a science section there that can read all the articles that we talked about today for the biohackers and, and, and the folks who love the science. You can read all the articles there. Um, in Prolon, you can go to prolonfast.com to buy it. And the fast bar is fastbar.com. We just launched the fasting shake. Um, it's going like a craze. We cannot keep up with the shake. Um, people love drinking or sipping on something in the morning. They used to, to do that with their coffee. So fastingshake.com also, you can get that. Good. Well, we will link up all of the, the El Nutra website would have links to all of the other products, right? Yes, the, the Prolon site, the prolonfast.com has a has a link to all of them because Anutra is the company and we do food as medicine and longevity. If you want to focus okay. on longevity, it's the Prolon brand is the okay. longevity one. I'll link, we'll link both of those in the show notes. Again, thank you. I, I, I hope that everyone listening knows how much thought went into this interview. You know that I'm not, I'm not big on crash diets. I'm not big on processed food. I'm not, it's not that I'm not big. I'm like anti, I'm yes. anti diets. I'm anti processed food, but I do think that there's a place for this type of fasting mimicking diet and a healthy lifestyle. Um, so I hope that you appreciated this interview. I hope that you all can recognize Dr. Anton's passion for this. Um, Dr. Long, Professor Longo's passion for this. You can only imagine the hours and hours and hours spent writing all of those grants for those millions of dollars. I can't even imagine all the work that went into he is, that. He is unbelievable. And then at the end of the day, he donates all of it. Dr. Longo doesn't take a penny out of the company. He lives on his uh, salary at USC and he donates everything else out there. He's uh, just, I cannot describe what that humans means uh, to me and to our company and probably to humanity soon. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, again, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time today. Appreciate you very much. Okay, bye. Bye.